everyone i hope that you had an amazing weekend this is joanne rosario Condry. come on in good morning today is independence day today is the fourth of july we celebrate liberty and justice for all here in our nation the united states of america and i want to welcome you this morning so come on in i'm so grateful uh to be in a in a land and in a nation that is not perfect by any means but i am grateful that i live in a land where i am able to worship I am able to work. I am able to uh, to advance in my life and in my family. Uh, and no, it is not perfect by any means. And there are many issues and many things that have to be adjusted, corrected, and we have to work hard together. Uh, but it is still in a much better position than many of the nations around the world, especially when it comes to the liberties that we have regarding our faith. So welcome Good morning. I love you all very much. As you can tell, we are on the move. We have been celebrating Miss Hadara's ninth birthday, which was uh, yesterday. Um, but of course, you know, we um, celebrate all week, all month sometimes. And we really wanted Hadara to feel celebrated and special. And uh, so, yes, so come on in, come on in. I'm looking down at the chat. I want to see who is joining me this morning before we get into this word okay i see you guys checking in if it's your first time please let me know that it's your first time let me know where you are checking in from this morning good morning yes good morning good morning to all of you i see you i see you i see you good morning i see you miss valerie we love you miss raquel miss cynthia good morning to all of you come on in yes happy fourth of july let me know how you'll be celebrating Today, if there's anything special that you will be doing, uh, I'm sure the countries will be getting into something uh, that does not require for me uh, to cook. And so that's a real vacation and uh, just continue the celebrations. Amen. But come on in. Come on in. I see you guys checking in. Father, we just adore you. We thank you. Hope, I love you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Father, we just adore you. We thank you for this wonderful family. This wonderful family that you have given us, this family of faith, Father God. Father God, from the Jones family, Father, to the Bailey family, Father God, to the, I mean, uh, to the Busari family, Lord God, I thank you, Father God, for the Barlow family. I thank you, Father God, for the Carey family. I thank you, Father God, for every family, God, that is connected to this, uh, to this house, Lord God. We just speak your blessing. Hallelujah. We speak your blessing over Rainfire. We speak your blessing over the children of Rainfire. We speak your blessing over the young people, the teenagers, Father God, the youth, the students of Rainfire. Father, we thank you, Lord God, because you're doing an amazing work in all of us. Father, I thank you that you do not leave us, Father God, to our own thoughts and our own ideas and our own flesh. But Father God, you, Father God, give us your word. And you have provided for us your precious Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into all truth. And we thank you. We thank you, Father God. We do not want to, Father God, uh, live our lives according to our own opinion. But Father God, we want to be in line with you. We want to be in line with your heart. We want to be in line with your direction for our lives. We want to be a standard, a living standard of who you are, Father God. We want to represent your holiness, your modesty. Father, we want to represent love. We want to represent who you are, your nature, your DNA. That's who we want to represent. And so we thank you, Father God. Continue to transform us and change us by the power of your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for this day. We thank you for your provision. We thank you that we don't lack any good thing. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you, God that you touch our lives, our mind, our spirit, our soul, our body. There isn't any area of our lives, Father God, that is beyond your reach. And we thank you, God, that you are addressing every hurting part. Make us whole. Restore the places that are dead and broken, oh God. Restore, bring life, Father God, to our marriages, to our finances, to our families. Father God, restore the thing, Father God, that has been destroyed. Father God, even by our own bad decisions, Father God, restore those things that have been destroyed by the enemy. Father, every open door that we have allowed, we repent, we ask for forgiveness, and we ask God that you give us wisdom, grace, power, and anointing.
to walk in the abundance and the restoration that you have provided for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And so I am excited. I'm blessed and I'm thankful to uh, share with you this morning. As you guys know, we are scheduling to uh, go back into church, into live uh, in-person services on Sunday this month and uh, make sure that you are uh, subscribed. If you're not getting uh, text messages on Sunday or if you don't get emails from us, I need you to send us an email today. Go to info at rainfirechurch.org to make sure that you are able to um, to uh, get information from us. Also, we're going to be starting a new discipleship track very soon. And so if you are not signed up or if you want information about that new discipleship track, I need you to email us info at rainfirechurch.org, I-N-F-O at rainfirechurch.org so that you are able to get information as we get that information out. So like I said, new discipleship track um, will be starting soon. And also you want to make sure that you're on our list. So if you don't get text messages on Sundays, you know that you're not on the list. And so make sure and say, hey, Pastor Joanne, here's my phone number. Uh, please add me to the list so that we can get that information to you. Okay. So I see you guys coming in. Thank you. Make sure that you check in so that I can see you uh, checking in on the chat. And so, oh, I see Miss Margaret. Hello, Miss Margaret. We love you, Miss Margaret. Uh, so as I said, today is a day that we are uh, celebrating Independence Day here in our nation. The 4th of July is the day that we celebrate independence from Great Britain. Uh, there uh, we were, as you know, we started out as colonies and uh, we had uh, the New Yorkers and we had the Virginians and we had, uh, you know, the, the first 13 colonies of our nation uh, that uh, were not the United States of America. They were just individual colonies as people were coming uh, to, the, to uh, this land and they were um, establishing colonies. So each colony functioned kind of as their own nation. They had different rules, they had different laws, um, but there is something that allowed them to come together and what caused them to come together because they were very, very, very divided. But what allowed them to come together was the pressure that they were receiving from Great Britain because Great Britain, we were under a monarchy. We were under um, a, a kingship. And so I believe it was King George uh, that was uh, taxing, the, Britain was taxing the, the colonies in a way that was so extreme and so unfair that it caused the the coming together of the colonies. And so as a nation, we fought for our liberty. Uh, when you think about the Boston Tea Party, when you think about the wars um, in different places, I believe it was the Lexington War and the Concord at Concord, uh, there were so many wars that were fought. Uh, and I believe it was in uh, 1776 that we uh, gained our freedom, that we uh, just declared independence and those, those last wars were fought and we became, uh, we became free. We became free. And so I think that it is important for you to understand that when a thing is established in a way that spirit remains in place. And so, yes, we fought for our freedom as a nation and we rebelled against the abuse and the taxation and uh, all of the things that we were under, um, it was to the extreme that if a British soldier showed up at your house, they could demand that you house them, take care of them, and feed them. So imagine that right now. Imagine that any police officer or anyone in the military has the right to show up at your house at any time uh, and come into your home and live in your home, and you are forced to feed them and allow them to stay in your home. This is the type of uh, issues and problems that the colonists were having that they just said enough is enough. And so this nation was established on uh, fighting, on rebellion, and on war. That may be the reason why um, even as the nation continues to move forward and injustice is being uh address that many times that same spirit of violence rises up because people want to be free. People want to be honored. People
People want to be respected. People want to be uh, cherished. People want to be to have equal opportunity. And so many times that spirit rises back up when there are other ways to be able to uh, deal with um, with the issues at hand today. But that spirit, because it's the foundation of our nation, that spirit still rises up from time to time. And even as believers, even as followers of Jesus Christ, we are from a different culture. Okay, We are from a kingdom culture. We are connected to the kingdom of God. So we should have a different way of approaching issues and problems. And now today, I'm not here to talk about uh, uh, injustice. I'm not here to talk about uh, those types of issues and problems in our land, even though we know, we know that those things exist. We know that uh, we have to uh, make sure that our hearts are lined up with uh, the kingdom of God. Uh, to be just, to be fair, to be equal, to love all mankind, regardless of color, regardless of religion, regardless of lifestyle. It is our job and our responsibility to love everyone. Help me, Holy Spirit, this morning. Forgive me for not asking you for your help before I jumped into this. I rely on you completely and totally. Holy Spirit, anoint me for your work in the name of Jesus. Um, But I want to bring this to your attention today. Um, because that is the spirit that uh, that moves in our nation, we have to be very careful that in our own personal lives that we don't take that approach. And as I was praying last night, um, Corey took the girls out uh, late last night, and they were downtown, and you know went to some different restaurants. But I stayed home. Um, just to be able to rest and pray, listen to the word of God and uh, just seek the heart of God to know what he wanted me to share this morning. And I didn't really hear anything until this morning, but this is this is kind of what he placed on my heart, Um, because even today, as we celebrate the 4th of July and we we celebrate uh, the independence of our nation, we have to make sure that when we move in our life, as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, that we understand that we cannot approach uh, challenges and issues in life the way the culture and the world approaches challenges and issues, okay? And so it was interesting as we were, uh, we had gone out earlier last night and um, there were there were women that were literally dressed in, um, what looked like lingerie on the street. Uh, and it's not my job to judge anyone, to reject any, anyone. I will never do that. I will walk in love with any and everyone. But it is very important for me that when my daughters are taking in these images, that I let them know, hey, they have the freedom to dress however they want to dress. Um, I, I mean, they saw people that were borderline naked to where only, you know, the, the, these areas were being covered and front and back, like basically everything else being exposed. And of course, it's not my place to judge anyone. Um, but it is my job as a mom to say, Hey, I know that this is what you're seeing. I know that this is what the culture is doing right now. I understand uh, that this is, um, okay. I see some um, conversation that is going on in the chat that I'm asking you to, we're not going to get into political conversation. We're not going to get into uh, questions about whether you love or hate this country. We're going to keep that off the chat. Okay. So I'm going to ask people to, uh, to refrain from that. Okay. So make sure make sure we're not going into that. All right. Regardless of how you look at it, this nation was founded on what is considered biblical principles. Okay. Whatever the posture and the actions of those that were the founding fathers, that is a separate conversation that we're not going to bring into our spiritual conversation. 
this morning, okay? Because there are plenty of people that are watching me right now that have called themselves Christians. And at times you have lived in ways that are opposite to Christianity. And so I'm going to ask for that to be left off of the chat. Okay. And I'm, I'm speaking to people that I know and people that um, have been in my mentorships. And I'm just asking you to respectfully keep the chat focused on what we're talking about regarding the word of God. Okay. So we saw these things, uh, and I had to, I had to be able to address with my daughters to say, okay, this may be what you see, but it is not who we are. It is not what we're doing. And I expect that even after I am gone and I go on to glory, that if I look down from heaven, I expect never to see you dressed in that way because it's not what we do. And it is not who we are. Okay. It's not who we are, even though that may be the fashion, that may be the culture, but it's not who we are. And it's not what we do. We represent royalty. We represent modesty. We represent the kingdom of God. And so even though the world and the culture does things a certain way, we have to make sure that we, uh, Don't fall into the culture. Don't fall into the traps. Don't fall into the mindset and the thinking of what the world is doing and saying. We have to remain kingdom. Okay. And so even today, I want to bring this, uh, this scripture to, uh, your attention. Okay. I want to bring this scripture into, uh, to your attention and it is Ephesians 4 verse 14 to 15 says, uh, there, okay, excuse me, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, instead, Speaking the truth in love, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. Okay, I'm going to read verse 15 again. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ speaking the truth in love. We will grow speaking the truth in love. We will grow. And why am I bringing this to our attention this morning? Because as I am explaining to you, we are living, we're celebrating the day of independence. There's a way that our nation has dealt with conflict in the past and in the present. There is a way, uh, there is a foundation that our nation has been founded on. There are spirits that are assigned. And even though that may have been the way that we had to fight for our liberty over 200 years ago, but that doesn't mean that that is how we as believers, as believers in the body of Christ, that doesn't mean that that is how we are going to fight for our own personal liberties. That is not how we're going to fight. That's not how we're going to address conflict. That's not how we're going to deal with our children. That's not how we're going to deal with our spouses. We're not going to fuss and we're not going to fight and we're not going to argue in order to try to establish what is right. Okay? Because the Bible tells us that the only way that we're going to be able to grow and to become in every respect, okay? The mature body of him who is the head is by speaking truth in love. It's by speaking truth in love. And so when we look at the word of God and we look at even uh, 1 Corinthians 13, okay? And that is the, uh, the classic scripture on love. And it talks about love being patient. Love is kind. So we have love being patient. I'm writing today. Love is kind. 
okay? Love is gentle. Uh, love um, is not self-seeking. Love is uh, so patient, kind, gentle. Let's just deal with those four, okay? We're not even going to deal with all of the fruit of the Spirit. But let's just deal with love is patient, love is kind, uh, love is gentle, love is not self-seeking. If we just look at those four things, the Word of God is telling us in Ephesians 4, verse 14 and 15, that as believers, God wants us to speak the truth in love, okay? Sometimes we want to just speak the truth and we just want to give raw truth. Well, I'm just going to tell it like it is because this is how it is and he needs to know what it is and she needs to know what it is and we just, we just speak the truth. But we don't realize that in speaking the truth, we are damaging people. We're damaging our children. We're damaging our friends. We're damaging our family members because we're just telling it like it is. God never called you to tell it like it is. Oh, so you want me to be a hypocrite? You want me to be fake? You want me to be phony? No, I don't want you to be a hypocrite. I don't want you to be fake. I don't want you to be a phony, but I do want you to be kingdom. I do want you to be Christ-like. OK, even the word of God in Proverbs says a person that says everything that they think is a fool. OK, so you out there that are keeping it real, the word of God says that when you're keeping it real and you're just saying everything that comes to your mind, the word of God calls you a fool. Because when you tell it like it is and when you say everything that is in your heart to say, you are being foolish and you are lacking wisdom. Wow, I didn't think that this message was going to come out this hard, but okay, Holy Spirit, say it the way you want to say it. The word of God is calling you foolish because you're damaging people. You're hurting people. So you're telling it like it is, but you're hurting your children and you're causing ruptures. You're causing division because you're telling it like it is. You're causing disruption in the women's group. You're causing disruption in your family and in your friendships. You're hurting people that are your brothers and your sisters in Christ because you're keeping it real and you're just telling it like it is. That can be considered rude. That And you can have all of the best motivation in your heart. You can, you can, you can want that person to grow. You can want that person to change. You may want the best for that person, but because you are just giving them the plain, straight truth with no filter, with no love, with no honey, you're damaging people. And that's not what the word of God tells us to do. If we say that we live according to the word of God, then we have to do things the way the word of God tells us to do, do it. The Bible tells us that those of us that call, call ourselves followers of Jesus Christ, that we do what he commands, that we do what God commands, that we live according to the commandments of God's word. Those are the sons and daughters of God. Those are the children of God, those that live according to the word of God. And so we have to be able to look at ourselves and we have to be able to check our approach. I'm not asking you to leave this conversation and go pointing at your brother and your sister and say, oh, you've been talking to me rudely and you've been doing it. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not asking you to do that. And God is not asking you to do that. God is asking you to look at yourself and say, are there things in my life that I can do a little differently? And is there, are there ways for me to deal with the truth that needs to be communicated in my life to the people that are in my life? And is there a way for me to say it that involves truth and love, not just truth, okay? When we do it only in truth and we are just raw and real, as people like to put it, we can possibly hurt and damage people. We can hurt and damage our relationships, okay? But here's the other extreme. When you only deal with people in love, but you never deal with truth, you're still doing damage, okay? Pastor Joanne, what do you mean? 
when you have your children, for example, um, or let's say you have a spouse that is being unfaithful, okay? Maybe your wife is being unfaithful or your husband is being unfaithful and you know about it. Uh, to just love them, love them. Oh, I just love you so much. Oh, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. I just, I just love you. And you're just pouring the love on them because you are hoping that by you just pouring your love on them, that they will stop doing what they're doing and that they will love you back. And, and it's almost like you're begging for their love. Oh, just, I just love you so much. And, and in your posture and in your actions, you're allowing abuse and you are allowing, not allowing infidelity because you can't stop someone be, from being unfaithful, but you are, you're not addressing the root. You're not addressing the problem. Okay. And so for example, there's a way to address the fact that your spouse is being unfaithful without cussing them out, without smacking them, without hitting them, without uh, going crazy. And yeah, you may have to fast and pray and beg God to help you. You may be so angry that all you can do is write it in a letter and give it to them. You know, I was at the store and while I was driving home, I saw you with so-and-so and I saw you holding her hand and I saw you and I am very angry. I am very hurt because this is not what I signed up for when I said I do. This is against the law of God. And even though I love you, if we don't get help, and if you're not willing to walk away from that relationship, then this marriage may have to be over. Okay? That's dealing with truth in love. Okay? That's dealing with truth in love, but you're not ignoring the root. Okay? Now, just dealing with the truth is walking up, smacking the girl, you know, or, or, or punching the guy or whatever the case may be. And now you've just looked as crazy as they do, right? Do they deserve it? Yes. But is that who you are? No, that's not who you are. You are royalty, your kingdom. You are a child of the, of the, the God that created the universe. So you don't have to lower yourself to that standard to make yourself heard. You don't have to lower yourself to be heard. You don't have to lower yourself to be respected. Okay? And so that's just an example. So if you try to love people when they're wrong, or even children, you just try to, you spoil them and you love them and you love them and, and, you, and you get them whatever they want and you buy them whatever clothes they want and you, you know, they never have to work and they never have to pick up after themselves and you just love them, love them, love them, love them. Guess what? When they grow up, they're going to be literally, they're literally going to be spoiled rotten. They will go through life thinking that everybody is supposed to treat them in that way. And they're going to be in for a rude awakening. So you will not be preparing them for the world, but you will be damaging them. So love alone by itself, not dealing with truth is damaging, but truth alone by itself, not dealing with love is damaging. Either way you look at it, you have to have truth and love together. So that means that we're communicating truth clothed in love. But what does 1 Corinthians 13 say? That love is what? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not proud. Love is gentle. So if your truth is not being communicated through the language of gentleness, then you're out of line with God's word. If your truth is not being communicated with patience, then you're out of line. If your truth is not uh, is being communicated from a posture of pride and arrogance, then you're out of line with the word of God. You have to be able to have the hard conversations. 
You have to be able to speak the truth, but it has to be clothed in patience. So that means that you may need, if you are boiling hot and you are angry and you are frustrated, you may need to go put yourself on timeout. Pray, deal with the anger, get rid of the anger, and don't come back to that conversation until you're able to address that conversation and communicate that conversation with patience, love, gentleness, kindness, humility. Stop, just stop yourself. Because God wants us God wants us in our families, in our relationships, to be able to have healthy relationships. But guess what? We're not going to have them if we don't do things according to God's word. So what God is saying to us is, especially on this day, yes, the nation is built upon rebellion and arrogance and that American pride, okay, which is sometimes negative. Because it comes across in a very abrasive and rude way. You'll notice that a lot when you go to other countries. That you can see usually who the Americans are because of their arrogance and pride. And the way that they treat other people uh, like they're beneath them sometimes. It's a spirit. And it's a spirit that is connected to the foundation of our nation. And we have to make sure, even today as we celebrate, I love our nation. As I said, it is imperfect. But I am grateful to be an American. I'm grateful to live in the United States of America. I'm grateful to have the freedom that I have to serve God in this nation and the freedoms that we still do have. I am grateful for those freedoms. But I can still see the spirits that operate in this nation that are not in line with my true culture, which is the culture of the kingdom of God. And this is just one of the scriptures and one of the examples in the word of God. And what God brought to my attention this morning in this scripture, Ephesians 4, verse 14 and 15. And and I want to encourage you, not just this weekend, not just, but I mean, going forward, period. That the Holy Spirit would teach us all how to communicate and speak truth how to deal with truth, not hide from the issues, not hide from the things that have to be dealt with, but that we would become assertive, that we would become strong, that we would be bold, right? Because we have standards that we deserve on being respected and loved and cherished as individuals and as people. We have rights, okay? As individuals, as human beings, as people, but that when we are establishing those rights, when we're having those hard conversations that need to be had with our family, with our friends, with our co-workers, that we would be led by the Holy Spirit to be able to speak truth in love. Because here, the scripture is telling us in verse 15, look at this, speaking the truth in love, then that's when we will grow. We will grow and become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. That is Christ. So if we're not speaking the truth in love, as a body of Christ, we're not going to grow. We will not be the body that God wants us to be. We will not mature. That means that we will continue to act like a child, which is what is addressed in verse 14. That means that we're going to keep acting like children. We're going to keep being tossed back and forth by the waves. We're going to keep being blown here and there by every wind and teaching and craftiness and deceitfulness of people. So if we don't mature, we're going to still be tossed back and forth. We're still going to be acting like little babies, like little kids. But when we begin to learn, to speak truth and love. Speak truth in love, which is patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, humility, not being envious, arrogant, proud. When we begin to speak truth in love, we're going to mature. Man, if there's anything that will grow you up quick, it's having to have a posture of humility. 
when you deal with people. That's why sometimes it just feels like it's easier to just be a hermit and not deal with anybody. But guess what? If you don't deal with people, you're not going to grow. That's why the women's group is important because we're dealing with each other. The women are dealing with each other. That's why our family units are important because we're dealing with each other. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that you got to stay in a relationship with people that are toxic and abusive. If you have people in your life that are toxic and abusive and they don't want to deal and they don't want to see themselves, then you know what? If you have to cut off people to be in a healthy place, I understand that. But you don't have to cut off every single person. Okay? You know, the Holy Spirit will show you when somebody has passed that line where they are beyond, like they just don't want to change and they continue to be toxic and abusive towards you, then, hey, you can cut that relationship off. But that's not every single person in your life. That's not ever. If every single person in your life you feel like has to be cut off, then I need you to look at yourself and I need you to see that you need to make some changes. Okay. And so that's what I have for you guys today. I believe that this is a very practical word, but I do believe that it is a word that God wanted us to hear today because it challenges us to make adjustments and shifts in our character, in our character. And when you miss it and you mess it up, listen, repent, come before the Lord, go to that person and say, you know what? I I was just off in the way that I communicated, you know, and I've said this before. I don't apologize for the truth of what I said, but I apologize because I presented it in a way that was not loving and kind. And please forgive me for the way I presented it. But what I said is, is it really is something that needs to be addressed. I have said that because the way that I presented it was off and it was not in love and it was not patient. I may have expressed it in anger and in frustration. And guess what? That is never going to bring God into a situation. Communicating in anger and frustration and disrespect is never going to bring God. It's never going to produce anything healthy or good. But when we do it God's way, which is speaking the truth of God in love, you're speaking your own personal truth in love. Then God is able to come into the situation and he is able to heal and restore. And that's what we want. We don't want to keep living a life where things are being destroyed around us. We want to begin to live life where we are continually being restored in the name of Jesus. Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that we're able to look at the word of God and you're able to address how we live our lives. Because we desire, Father, we desire to live kingdom. We desire to live kingdom. And so we thank you right now because we will, we will address issues and problems in the spirit of truth, but also with love mixed together. Father God, that we would be so wise and so loving in the hard truths that we communicate with our family, with our friends, with our co-workers, with any relationship that we have. Father God, that it would amaze the person that we are addressing and on how loving and what a humble posture we are taking in what we're addressing, that it helps them to receive what we are speaking. And I believe with all my heart, God, that this is going to bring restoration to marriages. It's going to bring restoration to family relationships. It's going to bring restoration to friendships. Father God, you God, you don't want people to look at us and be, oh, here comes the angry man. Here comes the angry lady. Father God, that when people look at us, that they would see love, that they would see gentleness and kindness and humility, but at the same time that they would see a person that does not compromise truth, that we stand for truth, but we just clothe it in love, in grace, and in humility, which allows it to be received by people. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. It's so funny that as I was praying, <laughs> my mind went to the, what is it? The Mary Poppins movie when they used to sing, a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine or helps the medicine go down. And it's true. The medicine is truth. But the spoonful of sugar is the love and the patience. And so as we are trying to give truth, let's make sure that that spoonful of sugar, that spoonful of honey is also present because it helps the truth of what is being communicated to be received by the person that is being addressed. Okay. I love you. Be blessed. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your family. Uh, I have been challenging you guys in these summer months. Historically, uh, the summer months are the lowest times of giving within uh, the church world. That is usually where um, churches experience uh, lack. And I don't want to say lack because God provides all of our needs. But usually that is when the giving is lowest because people are not as engaged in church. People are vacationing. People are um, doing you know, different things that they forget. And so I want to encourage you to continue uh, being a generous, faithful tither and giver that every time we come together, that you are uh, very, very uh, focused in bringing to the Lord your best give and pushing forward the ministry of God's word uh, through your tithing and through your giving. Some of you um, have, uh, were at worship Wednesday last week, we were in stage two in one of the smaller gathering areas because we're in the process of having to put a new unit into, uh, into the air system that feeds the main sanctuary. The existing unit that was in the building, uh, is not strong enough to, uh, address the needs of the main sanctuary. And so we have to put in an additional unit. And so, I'm asking you guys to participate in that and uh, be a part of that because we want to be able to get that done at least in the next two weeks so that we can take our gatherings into the main sanctuary. Um, because even with the existing unit, it was just too warm in the main sanctuary. So I ask you to partner with us in that and um, you know be as generous as you are able to be to help us make sure that that gets done within the next few weeks. We don't want it to be delayed uh, for financial reasons. So I want you to be a part of that and help with that for those of you that are going to bring to the Lord your tithes, your offering, or even um, a building offering for that um, that unit. You can go ahead and do that by going to rainfirechurch.org. Cash app is Rainfire ATL. Okay, you can Text the keyword RAINFIRE to 77977. You can mail a check or a money order made out to RAINFIRE to the address P.O. Box 6984, Douglasville, Georgia, 30154. Okay? You should have that. And, um, and yes, for those of you, like I said at the beginning, if you're not getting our text messages, send us an email, info at RAINFIREChurch.org to make sure that we get your phone number in our system. We also have a new discipleship track that is getting ready to uh, start in uh, the next month or so. And so we want to make sure that uh, for those of you that want to be part of that discipleship, uh, that you send us an email, info at rainfirechurch.org, and we will send you the sign-up link so that you can be a part of that, okay? I love you. Be blessed. Have a great day. Enjoy your holiday weekend, and we'll see you on Tuesday which is our new Rainfire midweek day, Tuesday at 8 p.m., okay? Have a great week.